everybody, it's Sam and Mesa Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make these really fun cards. Now, I actually saw something similar in a very fancy card shop and um, I couldn't take any photos because it was right by the till and the person there was, let's just say, not someone that would really like you to do that. They just kept staring, so I just thought uh, maybe I'll just have to keep that in my, mem in my memory. So, um, what I've done is I've taken parts of that and created this card and I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. So I'm calling it a double concertina maybe lock card or I don't know you'll see what I mean in a minute so this is the front so you can see they're both the same then I've just used elements of the papers which I'll show you in a moment that's the side it is bulky so this one will fit perfectly in my five by seven box envelope which I'll link up here but you can also shrink this down I'll talk you through that in more detail in a moment but basically you just open it up and you have this and I think it's genius. I absolutely love it. Now, the one I saw in the shop had another window here. So all of this was open. Um, and this bit was like stuck to this part here. Um, and I just thought, mm, I don't, I didn't think I needed to add that bit in. I think this looks like, wow, it's that um, showstopper card, I would say. Um, so I have concealed the part here. There's like a tab, which is behind this pattern paper. But I'm going to show you simplified ways to make this because you can, if you're not someone that's confident with cutting into paper or maybe getting your line straight, you can stick the tab straight onto this piece here. But you'll see there how it kind of locks through this window. So I've made two of them and I'm going to do the third one because I've kind of been just perfecting it as I do each style. So there's this one here again, still five by seven. And then you open it up. Look at that one. Absolutely gorgeous. Just love them. So on the back, you can write your message. And then, yeah, and it's got such a nice profile. I mean, you can see bird's eye view there, how it looks. But to uh, look at it front on, I mean, that's how it, it stands. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Love the papers. I've gone back to some old school papers. So some of you might be thinking, I recognise those. They are from a while ago. So again, I'll share all that. But again, you can see that style there. So they, they are straightforward to make. And I'm going to show you some simplified ways. And I'll show you ways to alter the size as well. But yeah, let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so I've gone back to three old first edition paper pads. So these are all from last year, I think it is, or maybe ones from the year before. Anyway, I'm sure lots of them are still available as well, and I'll share links if I can find them for you. But I've used Botanical Beauty on one of those ones and Wonderlust, both really lovely paper pads, which I'm sure many of you have. And then today I've gone back to Fiesta Fever because there were some really lovely bright colours, and that's why I've gone for this clash of like the kind of coral orange and the purple. I think it looks really good together. So like I said, they will all be linked as usual. For the sentiments, because lots of you always ask me about the sentiments that I use. Beautiful big one, I use this a lot and I've, I've shared um, you know, um, this one a lot. It's just such a handy one and it's the Card Making Magic by Christina Griffiths. So you've got your happy birthday there, lovely big one. And then inside I've used that one there to a lovely friend on your special day, which is this one down here. And then the happy birthday is from the new Landmark Occasions Collection, again by Card Making Magic, and it's the 72 piece months die set. And within that, you get the happy birthday. So that's what I've used um, for those ones. Okay, so I'm gonna get straight into the card base. We'll go through all the mats and layers and bits and pieces like that as we get to it. Because like I said, it's not hard to do, but there is a lot to it. So you want two pieces of cardstock that, um, sorry, you want one piece that's 10 by seven, okay? and you want to score along the 10 inch side at five inches. So this is really just a card blank, but because I the next one needs to be slightly bigger, I had to use my 300 GSM card stock. And then you just fold it in half, just so you've literally got a five by seven card blank. All right, so that's a straightforward one. This one is the same, but you've got an extra half an inch on it. So this one is 10 and a half by seven. And along that 10 and a half side, you want to score at five and 10. And again, just fold and burnish those score lines okay we'll probably do it that way actually so you might want to score that score line on both sides because you're going to flip it back and then basically that is going to stick behind that front one so we've got that concertina fold okay so that's all that is right now it's just you know again very straightforward and then we will talk through I'll give you the measurements for the the inside piece so this one here is a piece of 11 and 3 quarters by 4 inches now this is the piece that you can alter so if you've got 12 inches you can use that I'm going to give you the measurements and if you I think you could even do this with 11 so if you've got your letter paper size I'm sure you can do this so or it just means the card won't pull out as much it would just be well 
it's only going to be three quarters of an inch difference to what I'm using. But what you can do, so whatever length you've got, they all need to be that four inches in width, but whatever length you've got, you want to score at half an inch and two inches. Flip and do half an inch and two inches. And then find the middle point of whatever length it is that you've got. Okay, so for me here with the 11 and 3 quarters, I'm scoring at 5 and 7 eighths. If you've got 11, you'll score at 5 and a half, and if you've got 12, you'll score at 6. Okay, so hopefully that's kind of um, solved any questions. Sometimes people ask me those questions like, could I use this length of paper or so and so. Yes, I believe you can. I know you can do 12 because that's what I used on one of the other cards. And I know that you can obviously use 11 and 3 quarters. The 11, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it will be okay. With this one, you want to fold the outer and then the next one so they're both mountain. That middle one needs to be a valley. So you might want to again flip that over and score through the middle so you've got your fold in the right direction. But now you can see how that's going to look. Then on top, also all these measurements will be in my blog, okay? So don't worry if you know about writing it all down now. But while I'm going through it, I'll give you these ones. So for the little panels on the side here, these are one and a quarter by three and three quarters, so you want two, so that's my purple ones. And then the red layers on top are, are three and a half by one. Okay, again, two of them. And then for these panels here, you want two pieces in the purple, which are three and five eighths by three and three quarters. And then the white is three and three eighths by three and a half. Okay, again, you can see there I've used this glitter cardstock by Paper Mill Direct for my happy birthday, and I've just cut out elements from that paper pad to make that. So get that all decorated and done now, and then you want to add some, just thinking which way we're going to stick that in, it will be that side. You want to run some double-sided tape along those panels, but I'll do that in a moment. Okay, I've also gone ahead and done my front cover, so there's this one. I've just done some faux stitching using my Posca pen, mats and layers. Again, those mats and layers I'll write in my blog, I'm not going to show you them now, but you'll see all the photos and you can just create something similar if you want to. So for these mats and layers, you will want, um, so let's just make sure I get this right. So you're going to want one, two, three, four, you want five pieces, mine are purple, right? So five pieces that are four and three quarters by six and three quarters, okay? One will be for the front, one will be for the back, and then four of them will be for the middle to cover those four panels of that concertina fold. Okay, so I know a lot of you like to go away now and kind of pull all your papers out, so you'll see one of them. And then that's the back with this one, and then that's the front with that one. Okay, those will be stuck on at the very end, so I'm just sorting all my piles out now so it's all in the correct order. And then for the rest of the decoration inside, you'll want four pieces that are four and a half by six and a half, but I've changed my pattern. So I've got the plain red on the inside, which is where we're gonna have that window. And then I've got that beautiful pattern on the outside here. And that's where you can, if you want, we're gonna cut a slit there, or you can just stick your double-sided tape on the other side and stick it directly on to the double-sided, um, onto the pattern paper. All it means is you're gonna see that tab, but you know, you've got that on many other cards that I've made, so it's not a bad thing. But if you do want to disguise it, I will show you how we will do that. So that's all your sizes for your mats and layers. Go away, get your, you know, pause the video if you'd like to craft with me and get those papers done. And we're going to work with now two of the middle ones. Okay. Um, everything I'm going to do now, just get rid of that scoreboard. You will be doing twice. Okay. Everything I'm doing now, you'll do twice. So just pretend it's kind of together, I guess, in a way, just so you can kind of see how things are going to look. Okay, so what you need now is some rectangle dies. So I'm using the Card Making Magic, again, seems to all be Card Making Magic, but it's worked really well for this card, and it's the rectangle dies. These are the stitched ones, or double stitched. The ones I'm using from that, if you've got it, is one, two, three, the fourth, fifth, and sixth smallest, okay? So you'll want three dies, three rectangle dies, and you would you want a window that's going to be in length longer than the four inches of that piece that we're gonna have feeding through okay so this one here it's not too much bigger I think mine's only yeah four and one eighth so there's not much um, in it at all let me just check yes yeah, definitely four yeah so it just sits through there but again if I show you you can see it's just sliding through there 
see that? So as long as it fits through, so whatever die, your smallest of those three needs to be bigger than four inches. And then the other ones just work up, which are just going to create frames. That again is optional. And this is, this is another way to have it simplified. So if you are, say you're not having a mat and a layer, so I'm going to be cutting through this purple and one of these red pieces, you, to simplify it, will just have a patterned mat and not have this piece and you might just do one frame. Once it all comes together then you'll see it will make a lot more sense. What we want to do first of all is um, I'm going to cut through the the layer okay so because this is my I'm having these two on this one so if you're just having the purple then you would just cut through the purple but you do want to lay it down don't worry too much about the white one but just certainly lay it on this purple piece with a nice even border. And then I'm going to bring this one over, grab my, um, what do you call it here, tape, and just make sure you've got it in the middle. Actually, I'm quite happy with that. I'm just looking in the monitor there. That looks spot on. And I'm going to stick that down, and I'm going to dye that. Um, dye that. I'm going to run that through my die cut machine. Now, also, I should have mentioned at the beginning, you will need, in a minute, when we go to die cut actually into this cardstock, we are going to be running it through in this orientation so obviously the width of this is seven so you'll need a larger die cutting machine however don't worry if you don't because if you just shrink this down to six inches which is the width of a, a normal you know Sizzix um, or Big Shot then it will run through this way but it won't affect the rest of the design because if you see the size of that die well, let's just come off because it's not going to stick to that even if I bring that down a bit six inches here this same size die would still work and all of that bit that goes through it, everything. You'll just have to change all your mats and layers, obviously. But that's a way, if you don't have a larger die machine, don't worry, just shrink it down so these pieces are six by 10 and six by 10 and a half, okay? So again, I'm just gonna sit this on here and I'm gonna die cut this one. I'm also going to do that next one for this piece because like I said, you do wanna do everything twice. I'm just gonna line that up again and just stick that down a bit more. So I'm just gonna do that one. The next, Still using that same die, grab your red piece, sit it on the purple so it's got a nice even border and pop this one back in. It will like kind of click into place, you'll feel it. Pop the washi tape on and run it through the die machine because that means it ensures that you've got it bang in the centre but it will also then only have that one piece of cardstock to cut through. So again, we want to do that on both pieces there. Okay, so now we've got these two pieces that will sit perfectly over the top. Once we finish it with our framework, it just looks really nice and finished. And they're going to go over there. So now the last one is you don't need the red, just the purple. And you're working on the inside. So this one is going to connect over this half inch tab. Which way? You've got to make sure we've got our concertina like so. Okay, so we're working on these two inner ones but you don't need the red, just the purple. Sit it on there and again with that same die, make sure the purple's got a nice even border. Sit that in the middle, then run it through your die machine and this is when you're gonna have to put it through that way, okay? And I'm not gonna run it all the way through either, just run it through that piece and then take it out. Okay, so that's now everything stuck down and I've just gone ahead and cut my frame. So I've used the smallest rectangle that I used to do all those windows and then the next one up, and I've cut it out in purple, so it's given me that frame. And then I've removed the smallest one and used that medium one with the next size up again. Again, just pop them together with a bit of washi tape so you get a nice even frame. And then cut it out in white and you want two of them. That's completely optional. There is nothing wrong with keeping your windows like that. Okay, so don't feel that you need to do that. Um, it's just a little extra that I know some of you will want to do. Also, another thing that might be handy to do is one you've done is do this one first and then with the opening sit it over the top of this one and draw around it so you know that they're the same because obviously you want again this piece to thread through you want you don't want one to be too higher than the other or something okay so with these ones here all I'm going to do is just pop the purple inside of the white flip them over actually pop them in there together and then I'm just using some red tape because I'm sticking it onto that um, textured surface and then I'm just going to cover it and that keeps it all together and then just pop it around the frame. 
and it's just that like I said extra little bit of detail completely optional so I'm just going to get that done okay so that's all done next we want to stick these pieces together so I'm just going to run my Kalal glue down here on this tab if you want to use double sided tape if you want something that's nice and strong because this is obviously the main part of the card holding it all together and you just want to lie it down so that you get the obviously top and bottom lined up but you want the fold to be um, visible you don't want to go over that fold okay now I've also just gone ahead and stuck my mats down on the two outer ones there all right next what you want to do is Cover them with your pattern paper if you don't want to cut into this. If you just want to stick this directly onto it like I showed you, stick them down as well. If you do want to cut into them, what you want to do next is just pretend to stick this down so you've got a nice even border. And with this piece, make sure it's all up the right way. I'm on an angle because I want to make sure you can see it and I can do this. You want to fold over the tab and that side piece, all right, both over there. This side here, you want to line up with the purple piece, okay? But also, you want to make sure, like so. You also want to make sure that this sits nicely through this. So you just want a little bit of a gap at the bottom and the top there. So it's in the middle of that window as well. And it's also lined up with the purple. Then you want to lift it up still and you want to hold down, try not to move it, that piece. All right, so my score line is still lined up with the purple piece. And then with a pencil, just put a pencil mark where that score line is for the tab. So I'm just putting a pencil mark there and one at the bottom. And it's between those pencil marks that you're going to cut to make that opening for this to then feed through. So it's a little bit fiddly, but it's a nice way to conceal it if you don't want it to be seen. So then I'm just going to use, and we'll grab my other. So I'm just going to check I can see, yeah, that one's there and there and just join those two together but then you also want to slide your ruler just a little bit to the left or the right it's just a tiny bit and then cut again and then remove that piece probably cut into mine again because that was like you can see it's just tiny tiny bits you just want to make a little bit of an opening so it can hold the the width of my cardstock so see I am using that like 300 gsm I'm just going to that's a bit better and then you can test it grab that piece and you want to feed it through and you want it to fold over because we're going to stick it to the back there and you don't want there to be any kind of like it like catch or pucker a bit which mine is so that's an indication that I need to cut a little bit more away so just do that as a little test really and then I'm going to go this side kind of like when we make the slider cards and things like that but now that should sit in there nicely fold over and that will all lie flat as well okay so that's to do that one and then you want to do the same on this end but keep that pattern piece down there now and in the right orientation and then that one is going to be like that yeah that's right and just do the same and now it's just the fun part of putting it together so you want to put some tape you would have probably already done it on the inside and then grab your one of the sides whatever one you're working with take the backing off feed it through make sure it's all lined up there and just fold that over like so and then grab your glue and you want to cover this whole piece and make sure everything's the right way up and stick that one down now that's all concealed but if you haven't, then what you want to do is stick that down there. And actually, I should probably give you the measurement of where to stick it. So from the pattern paper, I've come in one and three eighths. OK, and then stick that piece down. Then you want to feed that through. Trying very carefully not to, uh, well, I'm going to have to fold them a bit there, actually. 
and then kind of bring the middle up so that'll give you that kind of freedom to move it around. Feed that through, take the backing off. Again, line that all up, fold it over. And then this one, just feed into place. And it should all line up. You just need to keep checking it really. But now you've seen how I do it, you know, you might do things a little bit different or find something that works better for you. But just kind of, you know, let that all set and then you want to make sure that that middle fold there sits between this triangle piece and it will all fold flat. It's very satisfying <laughs> when it all comes together but there's no reason why it wouldn't even if that one is stuck slightly more forward and that one's slightly further back it will all still close up because it's a concertina so it's it's very satisfying and then you just need to finish off your decoration so I've got this panel here for the front and we're just going to get the last of this glue out and colours and because I've used the Kalau glue throughout, it's just a really solid card. It's a beautiful piece. Great one again. I know some of you make your cards for colleagues and work, so lots of people sign them. This is a good card because you've got all that room on the back. You've got all you know, people can sign in there, they can sign on here, or you can have them sign all around here. You know, there's loads of space. But I'm just double double check that all stuck down there. But look at that. I love the colours in this one as well, and that's it's it's a great card for that to use lots of different colours. You know, you've got the nice sparkle, plain panels there, and then it just shows off that piece. And it's a great one for any special occasions. You know, a big number, whether it's an anniversary, you know, twenty first birthday, things like that. It's a great one because it just stands up like so. And if yours is short, if you're using eleven inches, all I think is going to happen is you can't pull it out too far. Yours would be probably more like that. So, I mean, that's with the um, three, 11 and 3 quarters. You can see I can pull that out. You want to keep everything obviously even, so that's in the middle there, and they come out like so. So that's got a nice profile. People can read everything. If you're using 12, you'll see it comes out further, like so. All right, so play around with it. There are my three concertina lock cards. I'll just go back through the other ones as well. So there's that one. Beautiful with that foiling detail. And then that one. Again, really love it. But do this decoration last just so it doesn't get caught up. And then today's, love the purple and the oranges, really fun. Again, all with the same sentiments, but very, you know, different designs. Um, and I love it. So I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you found it easy to follow. Um, like I said, all the links for this detail on the front will be in my blog, along with all the other measurements as well. Let me know what you think. Please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today and consider subscribing so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.